Okay, good afternoon everyone here from Big Bite Bates, live with the coach on Monday. I got Brandon with me. Everything's going good. Brandon, how about you today? Everything wonderful? Yeah, doing good, man. Doing good. Good, good. Well, I want to talk a little bit about several things today. The first thing I want to talk about is some of our clothing and our hats. We finally, it seems like it's been a year, trying to get our patch hats in. We finally got one of the two in. We got the khaki with the brown back with the dark brown patch and the Big Bite logo on it. And uh, it, it lists for twenty four ninety nine. We have another one coming that's green khaki with a round big bite patch on, but it hadn't gotten here yet. So we're still holding our breath on that one. But we do have this hat is now available on the website. So definitely check that out. That's kind of a modern deal. I know everybody's wearing these patch hats a lot. So we finally are up to speed on that. It wasn't our fault. It was just the hat, you know, we couldn't get them. So anyway, the other thing I want to talk about is the shirt I have on is the new comfort color, Paragon T. Has a pocket on the front, has a Paragon logo on the pocket, and then has a big Paragon logo on the back. Comes in uh, three colors, a khaki color, comes in this uh, this bluish, greenish, mint color, mint color that I have on, and then a melon color, I believe. Right. So definitely something to look at. I know from wearing it, it wears really good, it's comfortable, it's soft, so definitely something. It's $24.99 as well, and it's on the website as well, I believe, so anyway. That's that's what I want to talk about on clothing today. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's let's just talk. What I thought I'd do today is just spend a few minutes. It's the summertime anyway, and I wanted to talk about uh, some of the baits that we've put in for iCast, our new bait colors and that type of thing. I'm going to hit on some of those, and then I want to, of course, obviously hit a sensation bait before we get out of here today too. So let's just talk about what we did on our big worms, and uh, you know. Some of the colors we've put in our big worms, newer colors, are old. I call them old school colors, but they're very effective colors. So the first thing I want to talk about is we added the plum. Now we already had a plum apple, which is which, which is this base color with uh, green and blue flake, and then we had the the red bug, which is the green flake. But we didn't have the old school plum. We do now. So we got the B2 and the plum, and it looks good. I know that'll catch a fish for sure. Uh, I can't wait to get out there and try that out. I, that that looks really good. I know that's a real good heat of the summer color. So and I think you said that too, Brandon. So you were kind of excited about this color as well. Matter of fact, I think you would want to kept bugging everybody. Let's get this one in. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. Though. That's good. And then the other one, a lot of people are going to be excited about. I think. Um, is we put hematoma in the in the B2 worm. Uh, hematoma is a real popular color in all of our flipping and pitching baits, as you know, fighting frogs and BFEs and all that. So now we do have it in the worm too, and it looks really good. Now, just a little secret on that, we had a few of these around the shop, you know, over the years where we kind of a little bit of special run deal, you know, <laughs> and, and they do work really well on this lake. I don't know about other lakes, but... Uh, as we call it, the old bruise worm, it works pretty good. So definitely get your hematoma, okay? And I think you'll like that, especially when the water stains up a little bit. And then the new color that we brought in is kind of an, uh, a combination of two good colors. And that's the uh, what we call crime scene. And it kind of works basically. It's half green pumpkin green and half plum apple. And it's kind of unique. Uh, I've had lots of good comments on that. Matter of fact, I had several people ask me the other day, why did you put that in the fighting frog too? So, something to think about. And we also put the same color in the FW8, in the, in the big finesse worm, so you can get it in either one of the worms that you like. So I thought it was kind of interesting. So that's kind of our new offerings from, from Big Bite as far as our big worms go that you can that you can choose to fish with. Uh, and then let's talk a little bit about sensation. We've been talking about stuff that's sensation, you know, every day. So let's 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 talk a little bit. So today I chose the cliffhanger worm, developed by Clifford Perch. It's kind of a hand pour looking type worm. Uh, it's kind of neat. Uh, comes in uh, 12 colors. And uh, this particular one I'm holding up is green pumpkin chartreuse. And uh, it's one of the colors, and you know, you can go to the catalog or go online. This will be available here shortly. I don't believe we have all those colors in yet, but we're working on it. And uh, that's kind of it's a real soft worm. Definitely, I think, would be a real good drop shot type worm to use. Uh, maybe uh, you might have no way you'd like to use it. I know drop shotting for sure. Yeah, definitely. You, you could put it on a small, shaky head or something. Yeah, I you could do too. that too, but it's got lots of flexibility. You can see it's real soft, and uh, 
course, it has that, that, that sensation smell, so it's pretty powerful sitting here just talking about it. Yeah, I know Cliff wanted like an old school West Coast hand pour worm. That's, so that's kind of what he's got the, there, so definitely definitely will fit the bill for sure. Well, All right. What uh, on your FW8 there and your 10B2 worms, what kind of rigs do you like to set those up on? Well, I like to set this, this FW8 up. I really like you can Carolina rig it or you can put it on a big Magnum shaky head. That seems to be the number one way to fish it, at least in this area. Sure. Works really well. That mag head that we have, actually we specially designed that head to go with this worm. Right. And it makes a really nice combo. It's got a souped up hook in it. Uh, I definitely recommend using that. And then on your B2 worm, obviously you can do two or three things with it. You can you can put it on a, on a, on a wobble head or, a, or a, you know, you can put it on a Texas rig, put it on a Carolina rig. Uh, those are some of the ways you can use it. I mean, and, and you could even put it on like a, on a, I guess on a finesse head if you wanted to and do the same type of thing with it. So there's four or five different ways you can fish that definitely. And it would highly recommend, but I think Texas rigging and Carolina rigging would be the first two primary choices for most people. Sure. Okay. All right. All right. What about questions, man? What we got going on with questions? Let's see. We've got Byron Fry was asking, what is your best Texas rig setup for a fighting frog? Um, I like to use, depending on what depth of water I'm using it in, if I'm pitching it shallow, I like to use, I, I always put a five volt hook in, and a lot of people would probably would disagree with that, but I like a big old powerful hook, and I like to use a regular wire hook, not a heavy wire hook. You know where you can get hook set penetration really good. Um, I like to use a 316s out of lead on 17 pound line when I'm fishing it shallow. If I'm fishing it out deep, I stay with the 17, but I'll go up to a 3 8 ounce lead. And get, where I can keep it on the bottom out there deep, so sure. definitely. And you're using a EWG style EWG hook? EWG style hook. Now, a lot of guys will use a, a, a regular, what I call an old J worm hook on it, but I, I kind of like the EWG better on that fighting frog. And it I, seems to work a little better. I even think Drew Cook sometimes will just put a straight shank hook in it. I think he does, especially when he's pitching it. I do think that. I think he's told me that, so definitely. That's right. And let's see, Owen Larson, he was wondering, what are some good colors for fishing in the fall in clear water? Uh, I, you know, your, your watermelon reds, your clear type colors, or your all wipes, uh, if you're using swim type baits, things that tend to be a little clearer. We've got some new colors in this uh, sensation that would be really good to use in that type of clear water. Like, for example, that perch diner, or better yet, I'm trying to find that other color we that I was talking about. It's kind of like an, an AU, AU looking color, you know. A, you know like that smelt color? Smelt looking color, yeah, something like that. Something that's kind of clear, and I think, and not real, real dense. Sure. All right, let's see. Another question was, I mean, Mary, you were just talking about this bait. Okay. The hook size and, you know, maybe what kind of hook you'd used for a smallie smasher or now the sensation smasher. Well, um, you know, the way I personally fish that sensation smasher has been on a drop shot. So I use a drop shot hook, obviously, uh, you know, and, uh, but if you used it, say, on a, a on, on like a Ned rig head or something like that, then, you know, I think you would kind of fit that to the, to the type or style of jig that you like. And uh, you like to nose hook that bait? I do like to know When I'm drop shotting, I do nose hook it. That, that seems to be the best way to rig that, or the only way really to rig it drop shot and to make it perform. Yeah. Because then you get the full aspect of all the, all the ridges and, you know, the, the tail's got real good action on it and it works really well. Sure. All I right. hope maybe I answered that for him. That was kind of vague, but yeah. we'll, you know, we'll move on. Let's see. This one is a, another kind of a vague one that we're going to get into maybe for just a second. Cantus Fishing, he's all the time asking us some questions. Yeah, that's I just good. want to see we, if you've got any kind of that. curveball ideas. Oh, he, God, he wants to know if there's any colors we haven't made or you know any colors you'd like to see maybe come to a certain shape or just maybe something off the top of your head. It's kind of a... Well, I know a lot of people have asked me about the crime scene going to the fighting frog for sure. Okay. Uh, maybe the flamethrower to the fighting frog. You know, a lot of people use it as a trailer. That's a couple of ideas. Uh, yeah. You know, and as far as developing new colors, uh, I, you know, just go to, go to, go look on, to, online. There's so many millions of colors. It's, it's almost impossible to develop new colors. So you just kind of, sometimes we just go to throwing stuff together and you never know what you're going to turn out with. Crime scene's a prime example of that. Um, uh, the, uh, bruised melon's another real good example. We just threw some stuff together and all of a sudden, voila, we got a good looking color. So we'll continue to tinker, I know, and try to find things that might work good or look good together, nice combos. Uh, I know we did like that uh, couple colors in the fighting frog where we put the chartreuse lamb down the sides of them. Just tinkering, trying to find things. Like, so like BTL. I, yeah, magician. the BTL magician. 
just, you know, I think the big thing is stay abreast of what's going on. You never know what might might shake out next, you know, for That's sure. Right. And let's see, another guy, he was wondering if he's looking for a 10-inch worm and okay. he's on like a tomato red color. Okay, we don't have anything that's total tomato. But I will, I will recommend if you want red, this green pumpkin Texas red worm works really well. Now, it's got tomato on one side and it's got just a little bit of green pumpkin laminate on the other. And that is a dynamite color, as you well know. Oh, and, yeah. and, you know, I really like that color in that FW8. But it also works good in this, this B2 worm, too. I've caught them on both. And that, that gives you a little bit. And, and some people look at that meal and say, ooh, golly, that's ugly. But trust me, that, that, that the fish will bite this worm right here. I don't know why. They like it, though. Absolutely. Definitely. So that's, kind of what I, that's what we kind of have to fit your tomato. I'll put it like that. That's right. We don't have anything that's actually all tomato colored. Let's see, one guy, Definitely. he said maybe do plum in a BFE. Okay, that's a good idea. I mean, we're open for ideas, man. Guys, y'all y'all text your ideas and we jot them down. And then once a year, we normally have a meeting where we talk about colors. And you, you never know, your color may appear next. A lot of these colors we've gotten, gotten from people. So definitely. And every now and then, we've ran a color contest over the years to get a new color. I know that's how we came up with like the uh, red melon that we, we used in the classic from Texas, you know. And... You know, that's just there was one example of things we got from the from the color contest. Sure. So definitely something else to think about, you know. Spicy purple was another that we did on the college crawl that was neat. The college kids developed that color. That's so cool. definitely throw your ideas out there. You never know. Uh, we definitely will jot them down for sure. That's right. So well, that's is that going to wind us up today? Yeah, pretty much well, good. All right, right, sounds now. good. Well, uh, we'll look forward to next week, and, and everything else is good here at Big Bite. I hope it's all good with you, and just make it through the summer. Let's get ready for some football in the fall and fishing. That's right.